morning. Thank you, Jim. Um, I am honoured indeed to have been asked again to the uh, Edelman Trust Barometer launch. I used to say to Jim Glennon when he was a member of that august establishment down in Kildare Street that we used to have to trust him too when that ball was on its way in from on high uh, heading, towards the, heading towards the posts. Anyway, I'd like to say that it's, uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be here again. And to meet at a time actually when the need for trust was never stronger. In, um, in Stalingrad on this day in 1944, the siege was lifted. After 900 days and 650,000 uh, people dead, that siege was removed. And during that period, students studied and sat and completed their exams. Shostakovich uh, composed his seventh symphony and the treasures of the hermitage were hidden. And amidst the wreckage of that city, people got on with their lives and life endured. And the human spirit went on. And in the same way, in this country, we've been under siege. Though in our case, there wasn't an enemy bombardment. Instead, it was, as they say, friendly fire from the banks, the property developers, the experts, the watchdogs, and the government. Those gifted with the most precious possession that a Democrat has, their vote and their trust. And still, we get on with it. As for too many of us now, life has changed utterly, but it obviously continues. In the next four weeks, this country starts its journey of recovery. In fact, I could say it's a journey of redemption. Because I believe that in a time of national trauma, of national suffering, indeed of national betrayal, that we need a new redemptive politics, a new redemptive trust, indeed a new redemptive government. <coughs> I believe that we need a new political engagement, a new political language, and above all, a new political plan, so that a new government can engage again with people whose hearts have been broken, whose dreams have been ruined, whose trust has been shattered by old government, by old politics, by old system that has proven itself to be elitist, divisive, corrosive, and eventually self-destructive. Yes, and absolutely defunct. It's an old political system devised when another renegade elite was busy gambling away this country's future, only that time at the brandy-soaked roulette wheels and the card tables of Kensington and Chelsea. So what is its function in a world where we register a million new domain names every month? I want to make it clear that at the launch of this Edelman Barometer, that what passed for government, <coughs> what passed for public engagement, what passed for leadership in Ireland is now well and truly defunct. For our part, what my own party offers in their place is a plan to get our country working. A plain plan with no frills and indeed no options. It's a plan that's based on trust, this time on mutual trust, that will get our country back working. I like to think of this as a five-point plan, a five-point star, a bright star, in my view, which gives clarity, confirming our coordinates for what will be a difficult journey in the future ahead. I'm going to launch that plan Let's get Ireland working shortly. I'll just give you a very brief sense of what's in it. Protecting and creating jobs, fairer budgets to keep taxes lower, 
a completely new health system, reforming the public service, and politicians will lead by example because we cannot fix our economy until we fix our politics. And leading by example, as you know, costs money. It's hard to imagine that back in November 2009, when I proposed the abolition of Shannon Aaron, it certainly didn't leave everyone in the Fine Gael party ecstatic, or indeed others around the country. But in my view, good government, modern government, proper government, cannot please all the people all the time. And as the evidence of the last 10 years shows, nor should it try. Sacrifice, a word that needs rehabilitation in national politics is required. And when sacrifice has to be made for the good of the country, it should never start with the carers, the blind and the poor. Sacrifice never starts with the shell-shocked new poor, the hard workers of this country, the former taxpayers about to lose their homes, along with their dignity, along with their hope, and in some cases, even sanity itself. No, in my view, change on the next occasion will start at the top, with the teacher's office and the government. Because I do believe in Kennedy's dictum, of those to whom much is given, much is required. A good government, as you know, has to serve the people, all the people, acting in trust on their behalf. A good government must only serve the country, never its cronies, its insiders, or itself. And when people see their politicians leading by example, Little by little, that vital and now pulverized mutual trust will be rebuilt, restored, and strengthened as a demonstration that politics actually can and does work. On radio stations all over the country, I hear with respect to them, well-paid pundits and government cheerleaders saying, well, we are where we are. We have to move on. Go and knock on a thousand doors. Knock on a thousand doors. Talk to the people. We can't get to where we want to be unless we understand what's gone wrong here. And make no mistake about it, fundamental wrongs have been done to the people of our country and to our reputation. And that reputation has been damaged internationally at great cost to our people and in many cases to elements of our economy. Repairing that damage and rebuilding that trust is eminently possible. They're out there waiting for that vein to be plugged in again. And it will have to be, and will be, a priority of the next government. But I have to say to you, that of the thousands of people that I have met in the last six months, of those with fragile and shattered lives, of those who have real concerns and anxieties for their families, for their futures, for the capacity to meet their mortgage, they don't say to me, not a single one of them, we are where we are, we have to move on. What they say is, never again. Never let this happen again. And they say, put a stop to it. And we will. If it falls my way that we're given the opportunity to implement our plan, my plan, you can take it that it won't happen again. Because I've had enough now of the two Irelands. The elite Ireland that has cleaned up. And the rest of Ireland that cleans up the mess and the wreckage. Our plan for a new Ireland. An Ireland where people have work and reward. And an Ireland that works for the people. We have to create a new and very different political narrative. A narrative that hauls politics back to the centre of people's lives. In the last two and a half years, everything else has been blown off the pages by talk of banks and structures and subordinated bond investors and bondholders and burning bondholders and all of these things. To the detriment, to the detriment 
of the hundreds of thousands of shattered and fragile lives out there in this country who see no connection between politics and their reality. And walls of cynicism have been built up as a consequence of the failure of government to address that narrative. <coughs> and is it any wonder? And that's why, that's why the narrative has to be about compassion, about gentleness, about sincerity, about responsibility, about respect, about honor, about truth, about grief, about forgiveness, about restitution, about love, about even letting go. There has to be genuine expression if politics is to prove that it can embrace and lead people who now lead those fragile and shattered lives. And so we have to move on. And we will, but not quite yet, because <coughs> lessons have to be learned and lessons have to be given. And when the time is ready, when trust is rebuilt, when the plan is seen to be working, because Ireland is working, because our people are working, because the government leads by example, then we will move on. And we will move on together. We will move on mindfully to a better future. I know, Jim, that from your barometer published here today, that trust in government is down 11 points, that trust in banks is down 20. These are massive losses. They're not as big as the losses in millions of homes and hearts across the country. Not as big as the wrongs that the next government must put right. Because this political system is broken. It's been allowed to atrophy. We now have one of the most centralized states in Europe. We have a cabinet <clears throat> made up of people who are at a remove that's so powerful and so privileged, it is utterly unaccountable to the House of Parliament, the Chamber of Dáil Éireann, as it should be. Our permanent government, made up of civil servants and managers of state agencies, not you, Barry, are it's our five-point <coughs> plan developed over, over the last number of years. For every family, every pensioner, every worker, for everyone who calls Ireland home. And central to that is trust. That's why, at a time of unprecedented challenge for this country, for the last three generations, no government ever is ever going to emerge onto the future landscape with the scale of the challenge that the next government will face. And that's why we need a strong and stable government that is given its trust by the people and that will honour that trust in its delivery. In the next four weeks, I'm going to seek the trust of the Irish people to put our case, to change this nation and rebuild our country. I firmly believe that by 2016, the centenary of those who, who rose and died and took the first faltering steps towards economic independence, that we can demonstrate and prove that we are the best small country in the world in which to do business, in which to raise a family, and indeed to grow old with dignity and respect. That's the scale of the challenge. That's the breadth of the opportunity. And trust is central to that fabric. Thank you, Jim.